students welcome to vedanto neat english i am ms gopika your biology master teacher so we are going to learn biological classification chapter under 15 minutes with the help of a mind map where you will be understanding all the major concepts of this chapter so this chapter starts with the classification and first ever classification was done by aristotle but that classification completely failed because most of the botanists and the zoologists rejected this why was it because he classified plants depending on herbs shrubs and trees and then he classified animals depending on the presence and absence of rbc then the next classification that came was by carl linnaeus that is your two kingdom classification he classified all the plants and animals but the problem was that he did not differentiate photosynthetic non photosynthetic eukaryotes and prokaryotes unicellular and multicellular and he did not even know where to place fungi So this classification also was rejected by all the botanists and zoologists but it is important to learn the drawbacks then the most accepted classification was by R H Whitaker that is your five kingdom classification that is kingdom monera protista fungi plantae and animalia now in this classification you do not have to learn any paragraphs you only have to learn a box that is this box What is this box talking about? This box is talking about mainly five things. That is the cell type, cell wall, nuclear membrane, body organization, and mode of nutrition. These are the five main things that R. H. Whitaker took into consideration while doing this classification. So, if you look here, we have Monera that comes under prokaryotes, and the rest all coming under eukaryotes. Then we have the cell wall. When we talk about the cell wall, the Monera have a peptidoglycan cell wall or non-cellulosic cell wall, which is made up of poly. saccharide and amino acids and then we have protista where cell wall is present in some and absent in some then we have fungi present that means cell wall is present but it is made up of chitin and not cellulose then we have plant which is made up of cellulose and animal no cell wall then here when we come to nuclear membrane we have monera that is cell wall is absent and that is your nuclear membrane is absent present present in all others because obviously monera is prokaryote so the nuclear membrane will be absent Then we have body organization. So it started with cellular organization, then going slowly to multicellular, loose organization, proper organ system, organ level of organization. Then we have last that is the mode of nutrition. Mode of nutrition in Kingdom Monera is all the types. That is autotrophic, chemoautotrophic. Now very important thing about this is they can do chemosynthetic. that is using inorganic chemicals they can yield energy, and this is only seen in Kingdom Monera. So we have autotrophs. heterotrophs and under autotrophs we have chemosynthetic and photosynthetic autotrophs then again under protista we have autotrophic and heterotrophic fungi heterotrophic saprophytic and parasitic plantae autotrophic and animal holozoic or heterotrophic this is the only box that you have to study from arish whitaker's classification now let's try to understand kingdom monera so the classification started with kingdom monera and kingdom monera was basically classified into rk bacteria and u bacteria why was this classification done rk bacteria has pseudomurin or false cell wall and u bacteria has true cell wall or murin it is made up of murin so because of this the classification was done that is presence of false cell wall and true cell wall rk bacteria again classification is given depending on where it is found that means the ones which are found in extremely salty condition are called as halophiles the ones found in extreme acidic condition and extreme temperature is called thermoacidophiles and then we have methanogen that is found in ruminant animals or cattle where they will be able to form meat that is your methanogens then when we come to u bacteria u bacteria major classification is cyanobacteria and mycoplasma cyanobacteria are the ones where you have your blue green algae which is capable of doing photosynthetic autotrophism then we have other people who have the presence of heterocyst in their body like your nestoc etc those people are able to do nitrogen fixation or simple words take inorganic components and yield energy which is called as your chemi synthetic autotrophs then at last we have heterotrophic that means depend on other organism for food then we have mycoplasma which is the smallest living cell present with the absence of cell wall this is very very important to remember 
Then when we come to kingdom protista, kingdom protista is considered as the link between animal, plants and fungi. Why is this consideration done? Is because some of them under kingdom protista have very plant-like nature, some of them have fungi-like, some of them have animal-like nature. So this is considered as a link between plant, animal and fungi. Now if you look here, kingdom protista is divided into cryophytes, dinoflagellates, eugnenoids, slime molds and protozoans. Now what is this classification basically? What you have to remember from this is that at cryophytes you have diatoms and golden algae. The very most important thing about diatoms is that they have silica type cell wall that is soap like cell wall or overlapping cell wall. This overlapping cell wall looks like this and this is like a soap box like. Now this cell wall does not get degraded very fast and because of it they will go and settle on the earth bed to form your diatomaceous earth which is now used by many humans for many needs because that is very very rich in silica. That is the most important thing about diatoms. Then when we come to dinoflagellates, you have to remember about goniolex, which is multiplies rapidly to form a red tide. That is a red tide appearance is given because of this goniolex, which is a red dinoflagellate. The second most important characteristic of your dinoflagellate is the presence of flagella, one longitudinal and one transverse flagella. When we come to euglenoids, the most important example is your euglena. Again, they also have flagella, but they have a low long and a short flagella and euglenoids do autotrophic or have a autotrophic nature in the presence of sunlight and in the absence of sunlight they become heterotrophs or they feed on smaller org organisms. Now they have next one is slime mold that is very fungi like that is because they form spores and this aggregation of spore is called as plasmodium. So this aggregate, the when the condition becomes favorable, they form aggregates which are called as plasmodium. And when the condition gets unfavorable, this fruiting bodies will rupture and release spores and continue the replication. So here you have slime molds and plasmodium is the most important word to remember. Then when we come to protozoans, protozoans are categorized as animal-like mainly because of the presence or because of the presence of your flagella, cilia, that means they are capable of doing locomotion. That is the reason why they are called animal-like, that is your amoeboid, ciliated and flagellated. Now the next thing that you need to remember is about your kingdom fungi. Kingdom fungi was a very tricky part because kingdom fungi did not have a place anywhere in other kingdoms. So kingdom fungi was given a kingdom by itself. That is kingdom fungi is a multicellular decomposer and it is classified into phycomyces, ascomyces, basidiomyces and deutromyces. Now phycomyces is the most simpler one and the example you can remember is muca. The example you can remember is muca. And ascomyces, you can remember murals and truffles, and truffles, which is edible. And then you can remember basidiomyces, your mushroom. And the most important thing is about eutromyces is that it is an imperfect fungi. This is called an imperfect fungi because their sexual phase is still not known. Only asexual phase is known. And this gave a lot of confusion while categorizing your fungi. Now, these people can do sexual reproduction with the help of plasmogamy, karyogamy and meiosis. That is, now other than that, they can also with the help of asexual spores. That is your zoospores, conidiospores, ascospores, basidiospores. So there's a lot about fungi but right now please try to understand this classification. Then when we come further there are some people whom we are not able to put into any kingdom that is your lichens. Lichens are basically a symbiotic association between your fungus and algae. What do they do to each other? Algae provides food to the fungi and fungi provides shelter to algae. Now the main word that you need to remember is that phycobion means the algal component of lichen and mycobion means the fungal component of lichen. This will be seen in areas where the pollution is completely less. Now here if you come you have virus. Now virus also could not be placed anywhere so they are given a completely different class. Most infectious people. Now they are non-cellular organization which remains inert crystalline form outside the living cell. As they infect a cell they take over the machinery of the host cell killing the host. So the most important thing is their replication or their changing of the host machinery right. And 
वायरस हैव अ प्रोटीन कोड एंड अ जेनेटिक मटेरियल एंड दिस प्रोटीन कोड हैज कैप्सुल्स और कैप्सोमियर्स इट इज मेड अप ऑफ स्मॉलर यूनिट्स कॉल्ड कैप्सोमियर्स नाउ आफ्टर दैट वी हैव वायरॉइड्स वायरॉइड्स आर इंफेक्शियस एजेंट व्हिच आर स्मॉलर देन वायरस वी आल्सो हैव प्रायॉन्स व्हिच अगेन आर स्मॉलर यूनिट्स व्हिच हैव फ्री आरएनए विदाउट अ प्रोटीन कोड वेरी वेरी इंफेक्शियस कॉसेस मैड काउ डिजीज एंड जेकब डिजीज इन ह्यूमंस now this is all about your biological classification this is a general understanding about the classification i hope all of you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments how do you like this video and do not forget to like share and subscribe to the channel